number 16 wants a tangent line and it says that the tangent occurs at 1 7 but the tangent line also passes through the point negative 2 negative 2 so we can find the slope of this line that contains these two points by saying what is the change in y over the change in x and uh, the change in y from 7 to negative 2 seems to me like it's down 9 and the change in x from 1 down to negative 2 is a negative 3 and that simplifies to 3 and if that's the slope that's also the derivative right the change in y over the change in x dy dx and so with that um, in mind it's saying what is the derivative on number 16 at uh, this point 1, 7, and the derivative is the slope, right? So C is the answer. Number 17, we're given a function and we're asked when is it concave down. So it seems to me we need the second derivative. So a quick calculation of the first derivative for this function would be 2 times the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first or maybe better 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. Now the second derivative will be taking and uh, using that first derivative and taking the derivative of it. So we're working with this to start with and this looks amazingly like that so the derivative of the first term is simply 2x e to the x plus a 2 e to the x. The derivative of the second term will be another 2 e to the x. So our second derivative is 2x e to the x plus 4 e to the x. And now we're asked when is it concave down? Well it seems to me that maybe we'd want to factor out a 2 e to the x from both and leave behind an x plus 2 and now we know that e to the x no matter what we put in for x is always positive so uh, this second derivative will only be negative which concave down implies that the second derivative must be z less than 0 right um, it's going to be affected by this term and it'll only be negative less than 0 when x is less than a negative 2. So our choices um, would be the first one there, right? A, where uh, in that problem x is less than negative 2. The next problem, number 18, uh, we're given a table of values. We're given x and its direction or derivative at each of those moments. And we're told that um, the related function is continuous and has exactly two zeros. And it says uh, selected values of its derivative or direction are given in the table above. Um, if the domain of g is the set of all real numbers, then g is decreasing on which of the following intervals? Well, um, if it's decreasing, if g is decreasing, it implies that g prime is negative. So I look to this table and I say, well, um, it seems to me that it's in that interval between negative 2 and positive 2 that uh, the function is decreasing. Number 19, in this particular problem, the curve has a slope um, at every point. Um, we're asked which of the following is a curve um, described by um, that slope equation that passes through the point 1, 2. Well, um, slope is derivative, right? So the derivative of this first one is equal to simply 5 and uh, can't be a. The derivative of the second one 
is 2x um, can't be b. The derivative of the third one is 2x plus 3. So uh, be careful. Um, there, that's possible. Let's see what happens as we move on. Um, the derivative of the fourth one is uh, 2x plus 3 again. So uh, again, it might be d. Uh, the derivative of the last one is 4x plus 3. It can't be d. So we're down to c and d. Now the question is, which one of these contains the point 1, 2? Well, if we put 1 in c, don't we get um, the derivative for c at 1? Wouldn't that give us 2 plus 3 or 5? And that point is um, that does not go through 1, 5. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're putting the point in the, um, in the function. And if we put um, 1 in, we get 1 plus 3 or 4. And uh, 1, 4 is not 1, 2. However, if we put 1 in uh, letter D, don't we get out 1 plus 3 minus 2, which is a 2, and that's what we want. When we put 1 in, right, we get 2 out. So D is our choice. Finally, number 20 for this group. Number 20 says, the function is given above, which of the statements is true? And um, the limit uh, as it goes to 3 exists. Remember, for a limit to exist, the cited limits have to not only exist, but they have to equal. So the limit as x goes to 3 from the left has to equal the limit as x goes to 3 from the right. Well, if we think about it, the first one is coming at 3 from the right. x is our less than or equal to 3. Excuse me, they're coming at it from the left here. And if you put 3 in this first one, you get 5 out. And as you put 3 in the second one, which is coming at 3 from the right, the x's are all greater than 3. So if you put 3 in here, right, you get uh, 12 minus 7, and that's also 5. So this um, is true. And uh, it not only does it exist, it equals 5. Um, f is continuous um, at 3. And remember, it's continuous at a point if the limit as x approaches 3, which we just said was 5, if that equals f of 3. Well, f of 3 is coming from the first one here, and that equals 5. So this is also true. 1 is true, and 2 is true. Is it differentiable at 3? Well, no, because at 3, at 3, um, before 3, when x's are less than 3, the slope is 1. The slope is 1 uh, in front of that linear expression. And then suddenly at 3, abruptly at 3, um, the slope changes to 4. And so it creates this corner or cusp, and it's not differentiable at 3. So this one is false. So our choice is D, 1 and 2 only. That's it for this group.